Welcome everybody, my name's Adam Shorten and we're here today to look at shallow fishing basically in what is this god awful weather. Um, so we're, we're fishing uh, an open water lake here at Bay Martin Angling Club and out when I'm fishing it for 13, 13 and a half metres it's, um, it's about six and a half foot deep so plenty of, plenty of water for the fish. This weekend the the, the temperature is still quite high, it's about 17, 18 degrees. Um, it's dropped a bit from what it was, so it's sort of 21, 22 last couple of days. So the temperature's dropped down a little bit. We've had all this rain come in, um, and we're on a venue where I know from experience that they don't like the rain, these fish. Um, but nonetheless, there's lots of F1s in here and loads of roach as well, and a few good quality ones. So um, it's just about really having a little look at being a little bit more patient at the end of the summer with your shallow fishing, especially when the weather is like it is today. So um, not really any, any tweaks in the rig or anything like that, but just a few little bits that you just got to be a little bit more patient. It's not always as fast as, as what it is when it's nice and summer and a little bit overcast, nice and summer, sunny, warm day. So it's just that how to tailor things a little bit more for your end of summer, early autumn shallow fishing to make sure you keep putting some good weight builders in your net. Let's uh, see if we can catch a few, shall we? So, just just giving it a, a slap over, and sometimes they're pretty quick on it, but sometimes they're not. So, again, it's just about a little bit of patience. I tend to find the roach have come very shallow for it, and then the F1s you just need to be a little bit more patient for. So there's definitely a fish there, shall it? In the case of how do they want the bait now? In a moment, I've started with two number 10s down the line, like I would normally do. Obviously, um, I've, I always use stots when fishing on these shallow rigs, so if I want to put more shot down the line, it's nice and easy without damaging the line. If I want to move those shot up and have no shot down the line, so a really slow fall, which sometimes when it's tricky like this, they want. You do miss a few bites that way, but that is sometimes what's needed. So it's just about working out what's going to work. And often, you, you know, you find that it changes all the time. So you, you catch a couple of fish one way, you make a little change, catch a couple of fish another way. And that's how it works. I've just let that one sit for a bit longer just to see. Oh, there's a little knock then. Just holding that tight line and there we go. It's important that you bring the fish out of your swim. Or chip him back. And there's no rush, it's just take your time. Especially if it's one of those better roach. Now we've got a nice F1, which is lovely. So we've got him perfectly in the top lip. And there we go. Lovely golden colour, these fish. There we go. So you can see my elastic just a little bit out of the top there. It's because I've got it set, and I'll talk about this in a bit. I've got it set really, really soft in these short TKS short kits, shallow kits. They're absolutely brilliant for this kind of fishing. <laughs> You can get the fish under control really quickly. So I've not fed yet. I'm just going to slap three times over, four times over. Hold a tight line. And let it just settle. Just going to feed over the top of it now. And lift and drop. Just try and few different techniques. 
And when I, when I lift and drop like this, I don't use my knee. Some people use the knee and the knee's going up and down all day long. I try not to do it that way. I try to just use my elbow at the back here. Or just a little press down. It's just enough just to lift the float out of the water. It just gives you a nice bit of control. And obviously it keeps your hands free still for your catapult. And you are fishing like this. Feed over the top again, turn the rig over it, hold a tight line. Again, as I'm saying, it's not as fast and furious when it's, especially when it's weather like this. You've just got to be a little bit more patient. You know, still working, still working hard. I'm getting a few knocks. I suspect that when these are come like this, it's probably the roach. So you've got six mil on the hook, feeding uh, four mils. I'm feeding about eight at the moment. Just try and get the fish here. This is a, it's a big lake. There we go. But again, there, just a little bit more patient. Turn it over two or three times. And a little bit of patience, which is ideal. This map TKS elastic, the hybrid, absolutely fabulous for this kind of fishing. Super, super soft on the strike or when they're hooking themselves in this case, sometimes today. Then it powers up really quick and then especially in these six foot shallow kits, it just means the fish under control straight away. And then it, and it's in the net just like that. Oh, it's a lively one. There we go, spot on, that's what we want. First and foremost, um, the pole itself. Um, 501 is a fantastic pole. It's really, really versatile, nice and strong. It's perfect, especially at these kind of lengths. No problems at all, absolutely love it. The short number three just works out a little bit better for shallow fishing. It stiffens everything up so that it's like a toothpick. Um, and also the, the the short shallow kits as well, the all-in-one kits. They're only six foot in length. Um, and in, the best thing about that is that I'm using um, 12 to 14 TKS hybrid map elastic today. Um, but in those short kits, when they're set really, really loose uh, and soft, you've just got that beautiful soft take you know on the strike it comes out straight away which is really really nice and then because it's the hybrid elastic it powers up beautifully when you're shipping back with it being set soft it's just a case of taking your time it's, it's not problems at all it's just it's really versatile it's really forgiving you just got to remember then that when you unship and it's your top kit it just is a couple of pulls with it being hybrid elastic then it, it powers up really quickly so just got to wait for that fish to be there under control and then it's straight in the net which is brilliant it just means i've got the fish in front of me i've got the best of both worlds i've got the soft um, elastic on on the take on the strike and then I've got it right under control. It means I can net the fish nice and quickly. We're fishing some, you know, I've gone with that last hit today because some of the F1s are two, three pound in here, a little bit more, one or two of them. And then there's some, also some, some roach as well, some good quality roach, two to a pound, a few of them a bit bigger than that. A couple of skimmers in here too. Um, it just means that that setup for elastic makes everything really soft, really forgiving, and it just never lets me down. It's fantastic. So another little tip um, for when I'm, I'm fishing shallow this time of year, when you're just going to be a little bit more careful, a little bit more patient, because the fish aren't as ferocious as what they are right in the middle of the summer. When I'm shipping out, I always want, I want to ship out at a slight angle. I don't want to ship out right over the top where the fish are feeding. So I do go out at kind of a, you know, a bit like a, a 10 o'clock away if I'm fishing right in front of me. And then I can slowly bring the pole over where I'm fishing. Then obviously, I can slap or lift and drop over the line that I'm concentrating on. What I don't want to do is be shipping out over the top of the fish all the time. I don't want to spook them away because, you know, we're only fishing 14 inches, 12, 12 inches deep. And there we go, look, fish straight away. And then again, I'm bringing the pole out, out the way of those feeding fish, just so, just so we can keep everything really, really nice. 
There's another one of those lovely roach today. And you can see him build a weight with these, you know, two to a pound. There we go, lovely fish. And it goes. So, so it's gone a little quiet now, so we can either feed a bit more and try and draw them up. Or we can go a little bit deeper and see if we can find them. But I suspect it's feed a bit more. There we go, look. That's a roach this time, I think. So we're just taking our time going back. That's some lovely roach in here. Nice fish. Now we are, look a bit of patience again. Draw the fish out of the swim. And just, as long as everything's set nice and set correctly behind you, nice and easy. And take your time, chip him back. So a couple of pulls. They're a bit nutty, some of the F1s in here. They fight quite well. Good sport in these kind of conditions. Line on the line then. There we go. So we've still got pellet on on it this time. Again, keep it as it is again. But I am thinking that the shot down the line is just going to be slightly better. But we'll go one more time. And get that rig turned over. about eight four mils. Yeah, the line bite there. There's a few fish topping as well. And again, it indications to say that they are going to want it shallow. The roach this time, I think. I love the cores. They do get bigger than that in here. So again, we've had that fish, but I'm going to just drop those two number 10s. Still staying at that depth. Not going to change that. Just change one thing at a time when you're making changes. You know, unless, you know, it's something drastic, I suppose. It's just slowed again, gone a bit quiet, so we're just going to up the feed a bit more. Same amount, just a bit more regularly, there we go. And there's a the difference. So they are telling me that everything's right, rig's right, depth's right. We just need to feed a little bit more frequently. Let's trick them on. Lovely, lovely one of these bronze F1s. A lovely colour. It's very clear this lake and um, one of the reasons the fish are this colour, really nice fish. Let's 
start with the turning the rig over and fish straight away. So I will feed this time and uh, before I go back out when that having that fish so quick. So that's two fish since I've fed. Again. again with this TKS elastic and the short shallow kits this fish under control super 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 fast perfectly in the lip I say one of the slightly longer six mil pellets in the summer I quite like to use red ones for the hook just to make that something stand out a bit more with the silhouette. Kind of coming away, like I said, we're coming away from that fast and furious now. We're out so far, it's going to feed before we get there. And obviously, as always, I've still got the marker on the far bank. I'm fishing just off the back, there's something swirled on that actually. Fishing just off the back of the feed. There we are. It's a roach, I think, but fish on straight away. And that's what we want, you know, this time of year when it's getting colder. Just about swing him in. So a little look at rigs today. I'm obviously using um, the shallow white top kits. These are absolutely fantastic um, with the depth, depth markers on as well. Really, really straightforward for me today, really. It's a four inch hook length um, and a size 16 hook with a banded six mil pellet on it, straightforward. Hook length today is 013 um, optimum power, which is fantastic. Main line's also optimum power. That's oh, what am I on? Oh, 017. Um, I like to have, you know, I could go 015, but I like to have 017 for shallow fishing because you just need no nonsense, um, get the job done dead easy. It's, it's not about finesse or anything like that. It's just a case of something that's not going to tangle, that's nice and robust, and like I said, that gets the job done, especially with fish fighting under your feet like I do here. Um, up to a little dibber float so at the moment i start at 14 inches and then obviously i change it according to what the fish want but most of the shot underneath the float and then the, what's what's tend to have done well today has been two number 10 droppers about an inch and a quarter just above the hook length one right on the hook length not one inch and a quarter just above that and that just means that when you turn it over you've got a little bit of a fall but it's going to the depth where i want the fish and then obviously they're taking it and in some cases just hooking themselves fairly nice it's a little dink on the float a little lift for your knee and you're into fish straight away so that's been the main rig really i have set up a, a few others uh, one that's like a, a deep shallow and, and one similar to what i've got here as well um, just with a different float one that i can read the bristle of a little bit more um which you can see here so there we go uh, exactly the same setup, same length or length, same everything's exactly the same. Elastics, aligned diameters, the whole lot. Just gives me that different float to read, and I tend to sort of start off on that kind of rig, and then obviously narrow it down, hopefully to the dibber when you've got the fish feeding where you want them to, which is fantastic.
quite a few little tips in there it's just about keeping things simple but you know as usual try things out see what see what works on on the day it can be different all the time so you've always got to keep that open mind hope you've enjoyed it if you do please like and subscribe it really helps us out because it's um we do this for free so that would be really really useful and um other than that tune in for the next one i'm not decided what we're doing yet but we'll have to have a look but yeah tune in for the next one and we'll see you on the bank very very soon take care